Textiles. Um, with textiles, there are a lot of settings to be concerned with. Not quite as many as dimension styles, but let's just kind of look at how to create our own, right? So because we opened the Rhino generated one, it put in this very, very silly looking straight line digital text format, which is complete garbage. It's terrible. Don't ever use it. Um, you probably want some kind of serif font for most uh, for most architectural applications. So what we need to do is create a new text style. There it is. So uh, that's this little arrow button. I know it's silly. There should be a bigger button for it. But this little arrow button in the bottom right corner of the text panel, click that and it brings up this window. So in this window, um, you have a list that lists out all the styles that you've created or are present. <clears throat> so for us, we're going to do new. And we'll call this one, I guess you could just call it Arial. I'm going to call it Arial 3 sixteenths. Oh, can't do that. Never mind. Just call it Arial 1. So here in the font name, you basically just pick what your font is going to be. So I type in A real quick and get close to Arial. There's Arial. You can, um, you can set up your text to adjust to uh, to what you specify on screen, or you can give it a static height, which is what I always prefer to do. So I'll type in 3 sixteenths of an inch. Looks like it's defaulting me to quarter inch because I'm set to 1 eighth inch accuracy. So it rounds up. That's fine. Um, and then width factor, oblique angle, don't worry about that. That's just going to change the angle of your text and how far apart they are. Just leave them at zeros for now. And if you care, you can do upside down and backwards too. Or bold or italic or anything like that. So um, I'm going to hit apply and close. Save. And so here, once you select the text, you go up here uh, to where it says standard right now, and you open that up, and now you've got a selection of different texts to use. So I'm going to click on that, and then now I've got a title that matches everything else from my link. Thanks. So another thing to do here is another thing to do here is also have a page number. So for me, this is page number one. So I'm going to create a uh, a text style specifically for my page numbers because it's larger. So I open that up and I say new. I'm going to call this one page. And I'll make this one a half inch. And everything else should be the same. I don't know why offhand. I'll come check it out once I complete the thought, OK? So um, just about to close the book on this one primarily in, in terms of text formatting. And really, so I just set uh, I just set the text for page, and I go to uh, multi-line or single-line text. I guess it doesn't really matter. And you click, and uh, rotation angle, I'm going to leave horizontal now, because it's going to read this way. So we've been moving the arrow up. I want it to go horizontal now. And I'm just going to type in 1. I put that down in the block, and there it is. Hmm? 
half inch height. Okay, so real quick, doing a preview again, just so you can see what it looks like. This is what your sheet should currently look like. Are there any questions? Okay, I'll be around to troubleshoot if there are any, and uh, then we're going to move on to line weights. All right, guys. So I want to I want to um, kind of briefly talk about my approach to what we've done so far before we get into line line weights, and it's because line weights are incredibly important. Um, they demand a lot of conversation and a lot of analysis to understand how to use them truly effectively. So right now what you're seeing is kind of just the same weight of line, meaning the same thickness of line, um, throughout the whole page. And it looks rather flat. Um, if you look at those sections, right, the, the pochade cut material, whether it's gray or black, um, it appears it appears to pop toward you a little bit, which is what makes those kinds of sections that I showed you the other day more effective. So we do the same thing with floor plans. Um, we make the this floor plan is basically just a section. Um, we make anything that's being cut darker and thicker. Um, and then we let some of the other more detail-oriented line work fall back. So for instance, what I would show pretty thick is probably the cut of the second floor, and then the stairs would be ultra thin, because there are many stairs. There's only one slab, not to mention the second floor slab is also closer to me in plan than anything else. Well, except for the, the walls that are actually being cut, but we'll talk about that. But uh, the reason that I am emphasizing its importance um, and the comment that I wanted to make about the whole class is that at this point, I'm only giving you a little bit. So I gave you just a little bit about title blocks. I gave you a little bit about text. And I'm giving you a little bit about line weights. And then I'm going to kind of reverse it, and we're going to talk a whole lot of it about line weights. And then we're going to go a whole lot of it into the title blocks and the text and the dimensions and everything else that goes along with it. So this is an assignment for this week to have these plans. And then we're going to go into another project where these plans that we're creating for it are going to be that much better because it's going to have a lot more uh, information built into it. So. Uh, the last little tidbit here that we're, that we're going to incorporate into this set of drawings here is line weights. And it's, it's fairly simple. So once you have your layers set up, open up your layer properties. And we have these two columns. We have line types and we have line weights. Line types are essentially how you get dashed lines or dashed dot lines or dotted lines um, or lines that have X's in them or CW for cold water line, any kind of line type. Um, so line weight is the thickness of the line. How prominent is it on the page? And the information that you see under line weight when you click it, it gives you a millimeter thickness for the line. And that's significant because that's its actual millimeter thickness on a page. So let's look at our, I'm going to dock this on the side actually, so we can kind of play with some of it together. <coughs> And I'll pull this out so we can modify easily. All right. Weird. Guess I got to pull it out a lot. So 
So I'm going to drag these to the left so I can see them. Okay, and yeah, that's fine. I'll stick with that for now. So um, the ones I'm concerned with here, right? I'm looking at my floor plan. I have uh, objects and I have cut lines. So let's start with the cut and the object lines first and then we'll start to analyze and make it even more clear. So cut. Cut is going to be our thickest line because it's the most prominent on the page. So I'm going to just ballpark it real fast and go very, very thick to like a 0.9 millimeters. And a lot of this is kind of guess and check, guys. Like it comes with knowledge of the software to know which which line weight is going to be most appropriate for certain applications. But 0.9 is a good place to start for a very, very thick line. And then there is object, which for me, I'm going to make it 0.5 as a ballpark, just to begin. So I'm going to pull this aside and uh, do a preview because I want to see what it looks like with that line weight. And that's what it looks like. Oops. Sorry, guys. Um, so this is what it looks like. I've got my walls are being cut. I have openings in my walls here, and then more cut, more cut, more cut. So these are openings. It's fenestration. Um, if I, I don't have it open, but I'll try to open it really fast. Um, basically, that just means that, oh, maybe I can do it quick enough to show you. Oh, it's even still there. I'll check it out. But, all right, guys. So this is essentially what that is showing us. You understand the correlation, right? So that's how line weights are built to operate. So the next thing we have is the actual walls, which would probably, well, it depends. It depends how many levels of clarity you want in your drawing. Typically, my general rule is for a diagrammatic drawing, you want no more than three thicknesses. Some people say five or four. I think three. I think that's kind of all you can really communicate at a schematic level um, with great, great clarity. So um, rather than trying to differentiate the cut of the slab from the walls, because they're kind of at the same elevation, right? I've got I've got them sort of just slightly above where the slab is itself. What I'm going to do is take just this feature, this really special feature in my plan, and I'm going to make that detail lines, very, very thin lines. So that looks like this. Uh, back into layer properties. Oops. Come on. So I have uh, cut an object. And hidden, I'll save hidden for later because there's a reason they're there. Um, and I'll create another one for detail. Sure, cyan is probably fine, but I'll make it green. And this one is going to be ultra thin. So 0 0.2, 0 0.25. And that way, when I go into my plan now, I need to actually modify my plan. So I go back into model. I look at my floor plan, and here's where I have to actually change my steps to the detail layer. Detail. Okay, so you guys are getting that. There's a reason I did not change that line and this line. That's because that's my slab. It's a different object, and it's a different datum. So just the stair treads are what I created uh, a layer for. So now when I go back into AutoCAD, uh, the layout, sorry, the layout, and I go to my preview,
That's what it looks like. Oh, wait. Hold on. My cut layer is looking funny. 0.9.5. Interesting. That's odd. Doesn't look quite as, uh, can't really tell. But if you get really close, you can. Yeah. Well, the re yeah, the resolution's all screwy here. So, part of that is, you know, when you get when you get down to this level, the thickness of the line really doesn't change all that much about the actual cut. So, when I say poche, that essentially just means it's a graphic infill for a volume on the page. So, um Let's go, I, I have my three layers, right? I've got very, very thick, I've got medium thickness, and I've got very, very thin. But I wanna make that extra thick line really pop, so I'm gonna actually poche those walls. And so my last, last step before I'm pretty sure I'm done with this, I'm gonna go into model. I'm gonna turn off the object layer. I'll even turn off the detail layer so that all I see are the cut volumes. And I'm gonna do a hatch. And this is a little bit new to you guys. So I activate the hatch command, type in hatch. And here are your settings. Um, I don't wanna overwhelm you with too much yet. Okay, we'll deal with line type hatches soon, but the solid hatch, that's what we're gonna start with. It's right here under pattern, it's just solid. The only thing you need to be concerned with right now is these two buttons, pick points and select. Pick points will allow you to click inside of a closed volume and it'll fill that thing with the solid hatch. And select will allow you to pick a closed object and it will fill it. So I'm gonna do um, pick points and oh, let me make sure I'm on the right layer. I want to put this on the cut layer and go back to hatch creation. So now uh, let me just bring that up to you as another side point. Sorry guys, I got a ton of side points that I just keep getting sidetracked on. But when, when I went back to home, the hatch command is still active. Anything that has those active parametric properties that you modify, it gets docked over here on the right when you go into the other tabs. So when I click back into hatch creation, there it is. All my settings are still there. I can go back into pick points and now it's showing up as blue. So I click, 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 and click, and hit enter. And now they're hatched. So I'm gonna jump back onto the layout now and show you what that looks like on the page. I need to turn my layers back on and I go to plot and preview and now this is the product. That's a lot more clear, right? So um, our objective here is to get all of our drawings up to this level of clarity where we have a title block, name, class, a title for it, floor plan, sections, or um, uh, elevations, and then the number of the page. Okay, so I'll give you guys probably a little bit of work time to do just your floor plan and sections. And then I've got just a real quick, like two, two to five minutes that I wanna go through how to do hidden lines, and we'll move on to the elevations with hidden lines. Okay, are there any questions? So hopefully we can get up to this point in say 15 minutes. I hope that's enough, I think that's enough. So I'll check, I'll check with you guys though.